Hello, I'm Tip Squirrel from tipsquirrel.com. Recently on Twitter, I was asked about the tilt shift effect and how to recreate it within Photoshop. We've covered it a couple of times on the website, but never as a video, so I thought I'd put that right today. So here we've got the image in front of us, and the background to this photograph is that I'm actually standing outside the house they used to record the television program Doc Martin. So there's lots of people bustling around. I quite quickly turn around and take a quick snap down into the shore there. Now this isn't the best photograph in the world, but it does serve the purposes of a good tilt shift photograph in that we've got a nice eye level down into the village. So we need to sort of look down if we want to have that miniature village kind of look. Okay, let's get on and create the, the effect itself. Now I need to be in quick mask mode first of all. I can press Q on the keyboard or click on the icon right at the bottom of the tool palette just there. I'm going to press Q and in we go. You see it changed just very slightly. And I'm going to mark out a gradient. I need a reflected gradient which is the fourth one along here and I'd like it black to white. Now I'm going to choose what I'd like to be in focus. So I'm thinking maybe this truck here and the people on the beach. So I'm going to go right in the middle of the two of them and drag out my gradient. Bearing in mind this is going to be half of the gradient. It's going to be reflected the other way too. So there we are. It's showing me my gradient. I just need to press Q again to get rid of the quick mask. But it does leave my selection. And that does have the feathering on it even though you can't see it. So now we need to go to Filter blur and then lens blur. I've already been playing about with this image so the settings are already going to be pretty much as I'd like them I think. Here we go. And you can see the one that I would like to play about with most is probably the radius because it blurs more or less. If less to the left more to the right. But I want it to be able so you can see other details. I don't want it blurred too much, but it does need to be a very shallow depth of field. So for this one, I wanted 17, 18 maybe. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to click OK. Feel free on your images to play about with the other bits and bobs here and have a see what they do. I'm going to click OK here. And there we have it. So I'm going to press Control and D to deselect my gradient. Now it still doesn't look like a model even though we've got that very very shallow depth of field. What we need to do is to add an adjustment layer. In this case I'm going to add Vibrance. If you've got an earlier version of Photoshop you may want to go to Hue Saturation. So Vibrance and then crank the Vibrance up. And usually when I've put a lot of Vibrance onto an image I'll take the saturation down. But in the case of making a model I actually want to bring it up. L making it look artificial is kind of the point here. So, so there we go. So that's how we created, but now I can see that it's not exactly as I'd wanted it. This portion here that is in focus doesn't quite sit right. Now the problem is, is that I've got to go all the way back to the beginning. You can't put a lens blur onto a smart object. So it really is trial and error. Now I'm going back to my history. I actually made a snapshot from when I'd cropped it and got it as I wanted it so I can go back. So here we go one more time. Q, put the gradient on. In this case I'm going to go from the middle of the two items that I was interested in and go at a slight angle. Whoops, a daisy. Put Q, go between the two at an angle. That's too much of an angle. Oh, nearly. Okay, I just sort of want to follow the bit of the shoreline really. Okay, let's try that. Q to take it off. Filter blur lens blur okay I'm a bit quicker this time okay I'm gonna go okay with that and then add my vibrance let's get rid of the control D the D select add a vibrance lots of vibrance bit of saturation and my change of my point of view there was much better and it actually looks a bit more model Fied. I don't know if that's a real word, I've just made something up. But there we go, tilt shift effect in Photoshop, it really is that easy. We've done it twice in literally minutes. 
I'm Tip Squirrel from tipsquirrel.com. Don't forget to join us on the site for lots of other lovely Photoshop bits and bobs by some really very talented writers. Thanks for bearing with me. See you again soon.